What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to configure Sunshine for Moonlight. This video has been a long time coming. Sorry for the delay, I got a little sick and I had a work project that I had to focus on, um, but I'm happy to be back and I hope you like the video. That being said, before we get started, if you're watching this video, chances are you're not subscribed because 99% of you are not subscribed. That's a pretty bad number, so if you like this one, be sure to click on that sub or thanks button below. So, let's go ahead and jump into the video itself. If you're watching this, um, it assumes that you already have Sunshine installed. If you don't, go ahead and watch my other video on how to install Sunshine. And once you have it installed, you can come back here and I'll show you how to configure it. So, one thing I want to say is most of the time Sunshine will run right out of the box. If you go to your applications, you'll see here that we have desktop, which will start a stream that can run basically any application, and Steam Big Picture, which will open up Steam Big Picture mode, as the name suggests, and let you open any game from your Steam library. That being said, you can add new games as well. If you go ahead and click on Add New, you can type, for example, a game that's not in um, Steam, like World of Warcraft. And if we click on Start and type World of Warcraft, right-click on this, and go to open file location, we can actually find the local address of the file. If you right click on this and go to properties, you'll see that we have the actual launcher and code here. We can just copy the target with control C. Here, we're gonna go to detach commands and paste this in and then hit the plus sign. So as soon as you run this, it's gonna run this shortcut, which is gonna open WoW and that's about it. Now, one really useful feature here is if you're adding a game that isn't listed, you can click on Find Cover, and it'll automatically find covers based on that game, and you can choose your favorite one that you want to use. We'll go ahead and click on the Cataclysm cover. That one's pretty iconic. And we'll hit Save. Now, we have three choices when we start Sunshine, and we can choose Desktop, Steam Big Picture, or World of Warcraft. Now, let's go ahead and go to Configuration. Under configuration, as I mentioned, most of this doesn't need to be changed, but I'll go over some of the options that may need to be changed and may improve your streaming performance. All right, so if we scroll down, if you're having trouble with port forwarding and aren't able to actually forward it in your firewall manually or don't know how to do so, you can use UPnP, and this will automatically configure those services for you, uh, or at least try to, and uh, this is kind of as a you know second resort if you're not able to port forward directly. Next, you can choose what kind of gamepad to emulate. Most of the time, an Xbox 360 gamepad will work with 99% of games on the market. However, if you're playing a specific game and want to emulate a PlayStation gamepad specifically, especially if you're using one, then you want to switch this to DS4, which will simulate a PS4 gamepad. If you scroll down, we'll see advertised resolutions and frames per second. You do not need to change these because as the client, you're going to be able to choose which resolution you want to use. But if you know you're not going to use some of them, you can automatically disable them, especially if you choose in the client to automatically scale resolution. You don't want it scaling to 4K, for example, if you only stream at 1080p. Once you made your changes, go ahead and click on Save. And we can move on to the next sections. There isn't much we need to change in Files. And in input, this is a very rare use case, uh, but if you have a game where you hold a button down and it repeats the button over and over, so if you hold A, it'll keep on attacking over and over, you can change the delay of that key repeat when you're streaming. So if you're streaming from another device and you need to use that uh, functionality where it's kind of like turbo mode on the old controllers where when you hold a button down, it'll repeat over and over, um, you can choose how long of a delay you want that to be. Now, in audio and video, if you are having issues with these, I'm gonna go ahead and erase all this information here and show you how to find it yourself. If you're having issues with audio and video using the wrong devices, for example, the wrong GPU or the wrong screen or even the wrong audio device, you can set them up specifically here. So if you're using a hardware device like a speaker, you can enter that information here. If you're using a virtual audio device like the Steam virtual speaker, you would enter it here. Let me show you how to find that information. If we open up the program files in our C drive and go to Sunshine, this could vary if you installed it somewhere else, but usually Sunshine is installed directly into C drive slash program files slash Sunshine. And we go into the tools folder. We can see that there's a few tools here. They won't work if we just run them, but we can run them in command prompt. So let's go ahead and copy this address here. I'm going to click up here in the address bar and hit control C to copy. Now we're going to click on the start menu and type CMD. Right click on command prompt and run as administrator. 
and hit yes. Great, now we're gonna type cd for change directory, space, and paste that address. Now we're in the folder and we can run any of these executables. So the executable that we wanna run is audio-info.exe. If we press enter, it's gonna give us a list of all of the audio devices on our computer. If we wanna use a virtual audio, audio device like the Steam streaming speakers, then we would copy this address here and paste it in the virtual sync. If we wanna use a real audio device, like uh, my Realtek speakers, then we would copy this audio device and paste it here. Similarly, we can do the same thing for the graphics adapter. And we can type in dxgi-info.exe. Now, the same kind of output is gonna show up, but with our graphics cards. So we have two adapters here. We have our AMD RX 5700 and a basic render driver. So we wanna choose the adapter itself, the graphics card. So I'm gonna copy AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT, copy this and paste it in the adapter name. Now for the display, we wanna choose which output we're gonna use. So in that same command prompt, we're gonna scroll up and we can see our output displays here. We can see that this one is 1080p, so that seems like it's the right one. And let's go ahead and copy display four and paste it here. All right, so that's how we set up specific devices to be used if they're not being set up automatically. DWM flush is actually recommended because it improves latency and smoothness uh, with your mouse movements. But if you're having issues with um, this, it may be because of VSync, it's not compatible with some VSync features. So if you're having issues with that, you can go ahead and disable this, but generally it's recommended to leave it on. Then you can go ahead and hit save. And now we can go to advanced. Under advanced, we're gonna see a lot of very tempting options, but most of them do not need to be changed, but I will go over them in case you do need to change them. So quantization parameter is if your uh, graphics card doesn't support variable bitrate or constant bitrate, you may need to use uh, QP bitrates, which will set a constant quality of compression as it's uh, encoding the video. So the higher this number is, the lower quality video you're gonna have, but the faster it's gonna load. So it's gonna have super low latency when you have a high number here, but it's not gonna look great. So if you have to use the QP um, parameter, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, if you do end up needing to use this, you can adjust this number and um, find a number that fits, you know, a, well, a, a good balance between, you know, good quality and latency. For minimum software encoding thread count, uh, this is really tempting to just raise this number, but it's actually a little bit counterproductive. So the way you want to think about this is you want to set it to the lowest number possible. And if your computer can't handle it, streaming the entire process of encoding using one core, and you're, it's kind of struggling behind, then you can split that process across two cores, which will be a little bit less efficient, but will enable the use of two cores to make it you know look better and run better um, and then see if that works you can continue that process to three four cores etc if you need to spread it across more generally if you have a really good cpu you want to have it at one core but if it's starting to struggle you can spread that across more just know that it is going to eat up your other resources uh, for your gameplay and things like that next we have hevc support if we click on this, we can see that uh, there's a few options to either advertise or do not advertise support. The rule of thumb here is if you have a graphics card that supports this encoding, you definitely wanna use it. If you're using software encoding, you do not wanna use this. With software encoding, sending this type of stream out is extremely intensive and will be a lot more resource intensive than just running the regular uh, software encode. So if your GPU doesn't support this, switch it off, um, it's not necessary. If it does support it, it's gonna speed things up and make it a lot easier. Now we can force a specific encoder. If we click on where it says auto detect, normally, again, most of these settings, you just wanna leave them at their defaults. But if you do need to set this specifically, you can choose which encoder to use. So I'm using AMD, so obviously I would choose AMD AMF VCE. If you're using an Intel integrated card, you wanna use Intel QuickSync. If you're using an NVIDIA card, you would use NVENC. And if you're using a card that isn't supported, a slower card, 
or if you have a card that um, maybe isn't quite as fast as your CPU and you'd actually prefer to run your CPU as the encoder, you can choose software and that'll force it to run as a CPU. Now, error correcting packets are how we keep those little weird glitches and bugs out of our streams. If you notice a lot of squares and visual artifacts, you can try increasing this number and that will lower those um, artifacts down, but it will use more bandwidth. The more error correcting packets we add, the more uh, data is actually transferred. So it's gonna slow down your performance. If you're streaming online, um, you definitely want to keep this pretty low. If you're streaming locally and you have bandwidth to spare, then you can raise this up to get a cleaner output. Now, you do need to forward your ports if you're trying to access from outside of your local network. So I do have a video on port forwarding, but I might make an updated video as well on how to port forward, uh, just because there's so many different routers out there. Um, I can at least show people how it works on my new one. And maybe that'll give another reference point on an easy way to do it. But generally, you just want to go in and set the local IP address to be the official one that the port is forwarded in. So if the port is 47989, then you want to set it to your local IP address so that anyone who tries to access your real internet IP will be forwarded to your local computer IP because you might have three or four computers in your house and your internet provider doesn't know which one has game stream with that port on it. So um, you do need a port forward and um, that will be in a separate video or you can check out my older video on how to port forward. I believe I did it in the context of Call of Duty Cold War, um, but you just do the same process with this port number and you'll be good to go. Now, for the fun part, the encoder settings themselves. We have our NVIDIA encoder, our Intel encoder, our AMD encoder, and our software encoder. Most of these are very, very similar, and the whole goal here with any of these encoder settings is to find the balance between quality and speed. The higher quality you set this to, the more difficult it's going to be to meet those requirements in terms of bandwidth, um, GPU processing power, and CPU processing power. It takes a lot of bandwidth and processing power to run these so uh the higher we set our settings to the more difficult it's going to be to get really high frames per second so when we look at these presets uh the main one that you're going to want to edit is the preset itself and if we click on this we can see that we have some very straightforward settings on raising quality so we can choose good quality better or best quality and we can lower it to reduce our latency so we can choose low quality, lower quality, or lowest quality, and that'll reduce the amount of power that's needed to actually encode and stream the game. So by default, this is set to medium. So we can leave this here, and as you're playing, if you notice, hey, this runs really, really well. Let's <laughs> change that. Uh, you can actually raise the quality a bit until it starts to not run as well, and then lower it back down. And that'll find your kind of sweet spot of the best quality you can get with your current settings. Next, we have our tune settings, and this is more of an overall use case setting. So what that means is this is NVIDIA basically asking you, are you trying to record this? And do you want a lossless video that looks amazing, but isn't required to be seen immediately? Then we will spend a little extra time making that look perfect and then send the video out, which can mean a ton of latency, even unplayable at times. Um, or do we mean to stream this where we need at least 60 frames a second, possibly more, and we want to see the encoding instantly? We can choose low latency or ultra low latency for that, um, preferably ultra low latency, so that it sends the image faster. We want to receive the frames as quickly as possible so that our games remain playable. Um, if it's running fine. You can choose to set it to low latency, high quality, or even lossless to you know see how it works for you. But generally, you're going to want to choose ultra low latency or low latency in order to make sure that it's actually playable. The other ones are better used for recording, or if you're using this for some reason to like send it to OBS or actually stream it to like Twitch or something. Then for NVENC rate control, this is what we talked about earlier with the QP mode. Um, if your graphics card doesn't support VBR or CBR, you can choose QP. Otherwise, I generally recommend using a constant bitrate. If you use a variable bitrate, it can look better at times and save bandwidth at other times, but it's less stable because as it jumps into those bandwidth peaks, you might have some more lag and latency and uh, frame drops as opposed to if you just had a constant bitrate throughout. So I generally recommend CBR. Finally, we can choose our NVNC coder, 
and we can choose either high quality or fast decode. This is the same kind of idea is do you want to try and get the highest quality possible? And if that's causing issues, you can choose the faster decode. Again, usually you want to leave this at automatic. That way you can just choose it for you. And then you can hit save. If you're using Intel, uh, you have a few less settings, but the same kind of ideas apply. You can choose to raise the quality or lower the quality to adjust your streaming settings. And then you can choose which coder to use as well. You can choose the higher quality or faster decode. For AMD, we have the same set. We have speed or quality or balanced. So we don't have quite as much range of configuration, but we can still adjust all of them individually. Uh, we have AMF rate control. This is again where we have VBR and CBR. Um, by default, VBR latency is a constrained variable bitrate, which means it is variable, but it won't have those bandwidth peaks that I talked about in the NVIDIA encoder. This is actually still variable on the lower end frames. So when we're on a start screen that nothing's moving, it can use nearly no bandwidth at all. But when we start moving around, that bandwidth jump isn't gonna be as high because it has a cap at the top. So this is the latency constrained VBR. Um, or again, we can choose CBR, which I tend to prefer just because it's a little bit more stable. Um, but for AMD, they do recommend using VBR latency. Finally, we can choose our AMF coder. And again, this is just high quality or faster decode. If you don't have a GPU that supports these, you can go ahead and click on software encoder and you'll be able to choose settings here the same way, except this one doesn't have a drop down. So the same settings apply. You have ultra fast, which is low quality or very slow, which is high quality. And you can choose somewhere in the middle. So if you wanna choose medium, you can just copy medium and paste it there. Similarly, for software tune, we can choose whether we want to use a zero latency encoding for streaming or something that's not used for streaming, like recording gameplay, can use uh, film or animation in order to get a better quality decode. So we're gonna go ahead and choose zero latency and paste that in here. And what's we'll safe? Great. So that's the basics of configuring Sunshine. If there's any questions you have or things you'd like clarity on or want me to make a video on, please let me know in the comment section below. Sorry for the delay on this video. It took me a little bit longer because I got sick. And then right after I got sick, I had to catch up on some work projects. But I'm glad to be back. And I hope you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. And have a great day. Peace. Mike the tech, the architect, huh? Mike the tech, Mike the tech, yeah. Mike the tech, the architect, huh?